Last week, we saw the release of the ATEM 9.5 update. There are some huge changes, so stick with me as I walk you through them. Let's dive in. If your ATEM isn't up to date on the latest software, head on over to blackmagicdesign.com, click on the support tab at the top, and select the ATEM Live Production Switchers box. Down below, you'll see the ATEM Switchers 9.5 update with a download link for Mac or PC. Once downloaded and installed on your computer, you can connect your ATEM to the computer and head on over to the ATEM Setup application where you'll be able to find the ATEM Switcher update. This recent release impacts the ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO, ATEM Mini Extreme, ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, ATEM SDI Pro ISO, and the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. So basically, if you have any Mini or Extreme model, this is for you. Here's a screenshot of the full list of features because quite frankly, there's more than just six, but I've wanted to call out those that impact my setups and most likely impact yours too. I'm going to skim past the Blackmagic Cloud features since that's not used in my workflow and I know many others aren't leveraging that just yet. So here's some quick highlights of what's new and the big ones that stood out to me. First and foremost, we now have SRT streaming support. Woohoo! SRT streams can achieve sub-second latency, meaning it's ideal for live streams that have live interactions such as comments or real-time interaction. Second is certain to please everyone, and that is USB output routing. We now have the ability to route what is going to the USB output besides just sending a program feed. This is a really big deal because those using the built-in encoder or even external encoders can now leverage the USB output for multi-view, freeing up the single ATEM Mini Pro HDMI output. More on that later. The third new feature is the option for borderless multi-view. I realize this is a simple visual change, but if you're staring at the screen for hours on end, this might make it appear cleaner. This also brings me to the fourth feature, which allows for custom multi-view border colors. Fifth is allowing multi-view labels to be enabled or disabled individually. This means if you have a media player with a lower third graphic loaded in, you used to not be able to see everything since the label might actually block the graphic, but now you can disable that multi-view label. Sixth is actually not even listed on the Blackmagic website and arguably one of the best choices that Blackmagic has made. That is the ability to disable the fade to black button, yes! Finally, no one needs to make those silly 3D printed covers to prevent your arm from smacking the fade to black button. You can just go into the ATEM software control and disable it in the settings. Let's take a deeper dive. First things first, once the new software control is opened up, you can go into the settings. And if we go to our multi-view tab, you now see a few new features here. Under the borders section, we can choose borders on or off, which will enable or disable them. And then we have a border color, so we can choose any color we wish. You can see I can drag this around and select a very specific color. So if we want to brand ourselves, since I use blue a lot, let's use blue and hit OK. You also have the option to choose to turn your labels on or off using this button right here. Over in our output tab, when we go to live stream now, we have the ability to choose YouTube SRT beta, and this allows us to stream SRT. So we can select that, then we choose our server, our key, passphrase, and your streaming settings as usual. Up in the top menu bar, if you go to outputs, you now have a webcam output where you can select what goes to the webcam output. I do want to draw your attention to this output routing for the webcam output. So this is for the USB webcam output. And what's really interesting about this is if you have an ATEM Mini Pro or a model that only has one USB output and one HDMI output, you could use your USB output the same way I'm doing right now. So you could set your webcam output to multi-view and you can open up QuickTime on any computer and you can capture this so that you can kind of see a preview of your multi-view and then that frees up your HDMI output so you could output anything over HDMI. If you wanted to output something like program just for recording, you could do that. But you could also output something different, like if you needed to feed to a confidence monitor. So this is going to open up a lot of flexibility for those that have the ATEMs with just one singular USB webcam output. Now that I can choose my outputs in the outputs menu right here, I'm going to select my webcam output as my multi-view. And then using QuickTime on the Mac, I'll be able to show you what this looks like. So here we are in QuickTime, we're just previewing what the ATEM outputs. So I'm gonna move this right here and you'll be able to see in real time as I adjust this, what it looks like. 
And just to prove this to you, if I go to outputs and I go to webcam out, let's say I choose input one, which has nothing in it right now, then you'll see that change. And if I go back to my outputs webcam out and I choose multi-view, then you'll see my multi-view again. So in my settings, when I go to borders, I can hit off. It turns everything off, so you still have your multi-view, but there's no borders in the way. Super nice feature. And now we have the ability to change our color of these borders to any color that we wish. Obviously with this one being red because input number one right now is technically live even though I have nothing plugged into the ATEM at the moment. Now the really cool button that they've added here now is for the input title. So see how right now I have input number one, my source labeled as house, but let's just say this is like camera one, right? And then if I will save that just so it changes over there, and then we'll go to multi-view. And now I can actually choose to turn this off. So let's say you had like media player, which we do right here, we have media player one. I can actually turn that label off and that way it won't get in the way. So if I have a lower third that I've pulled into media player one, it's not going to be in the way. I can always turn this back on if I want to. A lot of people have asked me about fade to black. Well, it's right here under the general tab. If you look for a fade to black, you can check this box and disable fade to black. One thing I do recommend is making sure to go into the file menu and hit save startup state so that that setting is saved when you turn the ATEM on again. That way you don't accidentally hit it in a future live stream. So exciting things are on the horizon with the ATEM switchers. There's lots of new things to test out with this update. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on all of the new features. See you next time.